I am Amanda Capehart from Radcliffe Elementary. Um, destination acceleration for Radcliffe Elementary is slightly different than for the rest of the district for us. We have also included our 21st Century program, which has um, a couple different aspects to it. In the morning, we do really intense interventions with reading and math. And then in the afternoon, we start with our themed activities that have STEM, social, emotional, and a couple different aspects like that. Um, this week, we're focusing on Green Week and carbon footprints, as well as aviation. Um, last week, we focused on it was uh, cultures and creativity. So we're just throwing a bunch of different aspects in. Today we're visiting Wilmoth Farm. Um, we're looking at the planting aspect. They have a few other fun activities for the kiddos while we're here, so we're able to separate into groups. Um, they're able to plant some seeds and really look at that. The first week we were in Destination Acceleration, we focused on gardening. So this is kind of tying in a couple weeks together for us. So they're looking at the gardening, they're looking at you know some of the different aspects with the animals and that type of stuff today. My name is Jennifer Wilmoth and um, we are currently working on um, growing out the sixth generation of our farm. So um, we are the Wilmoth on Wilmoth right up the road. Um, we operate Wilmoth Family Farms right here in Cecilia um, on 2533 North Long Grove Road. We have approximately 800 acres. Um, 80 of it I get to play with on this side of the road. On this side of the road we are working on all sorts of different projects um, from vegetable box delivery to um, we've just started a summer day camp with about 20 kids right now a week. Um, each week we have different kids. We're employing quite a few people now already. We're up to about six employees. Um, but we have a huge garden. We did a strawberry you pick this year. We're working on planting our orchard, which has about 200 apple trees so far. Uh, grapevines, about 200. Blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. Um, we're hoping to one day become a farm winery in 2023. Um, our biggest things right now are our farmer's market, which we have lots of live music um, almost every weekend. We've been cutting down on that lately because our crowds have been smaller because it is so hot right now. But um, once it starts cooling, we'll go back to weekly on that live music. Um, this, the farmer's market's every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on this farm, 2533 North Long Grove Road. And um, we have vendors from all over the place within an hour or two from here. We get people from Jefferson County, Bullock County, Nelson County, Hardin County. Um, lots and lots of agritourism is going to be happening here. So definitely follow us and see what's going on and um, come check us out. And today we are um, hosting our first real school field trip from Radcliffe Elementary. We are very grateful for them. Um, we're giving them for just $3 a day. So if you have a school, um, $3 a kid, you get the barrel cart rides for like an hour straight, jump pad, well the whole three hours is just barrel cart rides, barrel cart rides, um, jump pad, cor the corn pit's not up and running, but the tire mountain, um, the petting zoo, all these guys here. We even have a tortoise, his name's Wisdom, and he is super cool and he'll eat grass right out of your hand. Um, but yeah, definitely come check us out when you can. And we're looking forward to growing with the community and offering lots of different things. For more information on the vegetable box delivery, you can check out wilmothfarms.com. Um, for more information on our daily activities, our weekly activities, um, summer camp, veg uh, vegetable box delivery, and the farmer's market, you can check out Wilmoth Family Farms on Facebook. Uh, destination acceleration allows us to help prevent the summer slide. It also helps some of our students that may have needed a little more instruction throughout the year, um, especially with the NTI portion of the year. It really benefits the students in the fact that we can give them some added instruction, but not just focus on the total instruction and kind of lose their interest throughout the year. We have different weeks we switch out. Um, I think next week we focus on careers and we have a week that we focus on like the zoos, animals, that type of stuff, trying to pull in a couple different things. Um, just like with the aviation, tomorrow we're going to Vine Grove Airport. Um, we're looking into going to the Falls of Ohio next week. 
So we've done a lot of activities to kind of get the kids in the community as much as possible, get them on field trips because it really wasn't an option with COVID this year. I can say they really weren't that excited but once they got into it and they've seen that we're doing stuff like this the afternoon I mean after lunch we come back and we have that full block from 12 to 2 that we are just I mean it's hands-on last week we did all kinds of different art from different cultures we did a bunch of like foods from different cultures so they're getting to experience a lot of stuff that through the school year we might just not have the time for it might not fit our standards so they're really actually excited to come in they're excited to see the stuff um, just anticipation on the bus when they get going someplace they're like are we there yet are we there yet we went to the science center the first week and they were just so beside themselves amazed with the things that they saw even just going to downtown Louisville so it's been a really good experience for everybody all right so this is the garden this is what we supply with our vegetable box delivery that we do That's cool. and um, we also have a farmer's market here so we sell here at the farmer's market but we're trying lots of different methods of growing no, this is actually called Swiss chard, which is a green. You can eat it in your salads or you can eat it or you can cook it like kale or like a turnip green, how you cook it in like grease and stuff. It's just a green. We are trying to avoid plastic in all of our farming techniques. So if you notice, there is no plastic. Well, not using plastic makes it much harder for us to um, control weeds. So nothing is planted from here to here. I've been trying techniques with using vinegar, salt, Dawn dish soap to kill our weeds in between. It's working, but it's not really working. It like sets them back and makes them angry, but they're not actually dying. So you can see how some are yellowed, but they didn't die. So, so we're working on that. We're going to have to probably lay something in between here, something renewable, something we can use twice. But, um, so here we're using deep litter method, which is like mulching. We tried it over here too, but you can see the weeds decided it wasn't enough. So we got to go through, we got to pick all the weeds and mulch more. Um, if we walk farther down here, we can see I tried paper. So craft paper is, does anybody know what biodegradable means? No. no. Well, no? What does biodegradable mean? Biodegradable. Uh, if it, it can disintegr it disintegrates over time. Mm -hmm. It 
like they're making bio disintegratable bottle <laughs> bottles uh -huh. and stuff like that so you know if it goes in the ocean it'll just disintegrate yeah. and not stay in the ocean for thousands and thousands and thousands of years yeah okay so I'll tell you about bottles, plastic. There is biodegradable plastic, but biodegradable plastic still breaks down into what's called microplastics, tiny little particles of plastic. It stays in your soil and washes off and goes into the, into the ocean still. And the fish and stuff and, the, and the, the animals that eat krill, they still get that plastic inside of them. So we want to try to avoid plastic at all costs. Like that plastic bottle. Yes, like plastic bottles. So they will, we can recycle this. This is actually probably, be, I would think, better to use than biodegradable because then you can just recycle it. And it goes back into making a new bottle. But if it's biodegradable plastic, it breaks down into microplastics. And it goes into the, into the water supply. So we're going to go down here and I'll show you the paper mulch. You can see how the, the rows are angry but not dead. That's from vinegar. Like trying to kill it off with vinegar and salt and stuff, trying to dry those plants up, it didn't work. So we're just, it's just like a science experiment out here. This over here, we're weeding with just um, trying to disturb the soil. So we'll take a knife or something sharp. Like here, we'll just take like a knife or something sharp, which I'm using this as an example, and just go in like this between all these plants. And it's long, it's tedious, it's very frustrating. <laughs> So this didn't work that great. Down here we're trying something different and it's using craft paper, which is biodegradable. It's made from trees. So it goes back into the earth, the worms eat it, and it doesn't create microplastics. This is craft paper. This is literally paper laid on the ground. So you can see how well this is working. We're very happy with how this is working. And what we're going to do now after this, we're going to actually mulch on top of this as well. So if you guys ever decide to do a garden at home, you don't have to go buy this crap paper like I did. You can use newspaper. You can use newspaper that's not slick. So slick newspaper has other chemicals in it that you don't want to put into the ground. But the paper that's not slick, they print it with a dye that's also biodegradable. That's a natural dye. But yeah, you can see this is working really well. And it's and it, we're trying to make as small of an impact on the environment as possible. But yeah, so we, this is what we're gonna try to do on the entire farm, from here all the way back. But the upfront cost is gonna save us in the end cost because we, ha we can reduce our labor cost, which means people don't have to be out here weeding it, okay? But then we're also not damaging the environment as much. Isn't that cool? Yeah, do you see the science experiment I've done here? Yeah. You can kind of see the progression. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and ask questions. So has a rabbit ever tried to steal your food? Oh yeah, so I don't spray chemicals. I don't spray seven, which is a chemical to kill bugs. And I don't spray Roundup to kill weeds. And I also plant enough for all foe, which is rabbits, bugs, deer. If you plant enough, you can feed the people and the bugs and the animals okay so like strawberries out there i don't spray nothing and the rabbits eat it the slugs eat it but there's still so many strawberries that plenty of people came out here and still got strawberries but yeah so this is our this is our science experiment out here and i think we've made lots of progress and learned a lot over the over the process and this will all be mulched like that other stuff that's mulched overall i think we really just want to experience with the kids um they're getting to experience things that they haven't experienced through the school year. I mean, the academics, yes, of course, that's so important, but especially with our Radcliffe kiddos, it's really important that they're getting to adventure. They're getting to, I mean, see that curriculum and do thing, fun things with different curriculums. I mean, even in the afternoon when we do those fun activities, we're still pulling in reading and we're still pulling in math to try to show, you know, this is how we tie this in. This is how this works and this is why it's important. Um, they're also able to see a lot of community outreach with it. Um, different things they can do in their life if they're interested in zoology or I mean anything like that so I think just the experience is really important for the kids. I'm now in elementary school and in and, and fourth grade. I've been learning about earth. I like planting flowers 
and also come to a farm. Hi, my name is Deja. I go to Radcliffe Elementary and I'm going to the fifth grade. So far in this camp, I have learned about gardening and about how, how the plant gets um, food is from the leaves. My favorite thing so far about the camp is how we learned about gardening. Some fun things that we learned is that the um, roots help is the main part about the plant. We are learning very many fun things and things that you would need to know in the future. Uh, I, my name is Connor. I, I'm going to third grade and I, I am at Radcliffe Elementary. I've learned gardening is where whenever a plant is is growing oh um the the leaves produce more water and sun so far i have liked the aviation because it's cool to see how they work and how they fly the summer camp is to learn about aviation, green week, and all about everything else for every, everybody. 21st century program that Destination Acceleration kind of paired with for Radcliffe Elementary was awarded to Radcliffe Elementary at the beginning of the year. It is a state and federal grant that were awarded through Kentucky. Um, there's a whole lot of hoops we had to jump through and it was a, a big deal. Um, we actually have an after school component that we do throughout the year. It was four days a week. We actually did it Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And they stayed until, um, I think it was five-ish after school. Um, so, so we really just work with students. It's not necessarily that anybody's behind. It might just be an activity that we invited for everybody to attend. Um, of course, we did open it up to those after school kiddos first. And then it was an open invitation. Teachers handed out invitations to students to just fill out that paperwork for it. Um, the program in itself is just, it has to incorporate academics 50% of the time and then the other 50% of the time we really have to focus on that STEM activities, the community outreach. Um, we've done a lot throughout the year and hopefully next year with COVID restrictions opening up we do a lot more. But just having our partners in Radcliffe, our police department, our fire department, um, we've gotten so many people that are just willing to come in and work with the kiddos. And of course, like I said, COVID, we couldn't this year, but hopefully with this upcoming year, we're able to get more involved with those um, partners, get the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts of America in. Those were some of our partners that we had. So really, it's just this huge cumulative like program that we have going on, and it paired so well with our destination acceleration that Hardin County is doing as a whole.